Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Dr. Robinson here again. We're going to continue our studies. We're going on a reviewing of the grade eight New York State mathematics exam. This is our show number one for 2022. We'll be taking examples from the 2021 exam. If you need help with your homework, there's Dial the Teacher Homework Helpline at 212-777-3380, Monday to Thursdays from 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. Give them a call. They're very nice people and they're very helpful. Don't forget to watch our show Math Time on Tuesdays, 4.30 p.m. to 5 p.m. on Optimum Cable Vision, only in Peak Skill on Channel 15. Don't forget, we also have YouTube videos. My channel name is Dan Robinson. You can reach me at uh, uh, Dan Robinson, PKMS, Peak Skill Middle School, and subscribe to our channel. Check out what we're doing. I think you'll like our videos. Give us a thumbs up if you do, but write me a comment if you have comments, because I'd love to write you back and hear what you got to say. We have our latest release called PKMS Math Prep 22. Check it out. It's a good soundtrack I, I like. So you can tweet me at DRobMath1. All right, let's get going. The fact At a factory, the cost of making different numbers of toothbrushes is shown in the table below. So the cost of toothbrushes, so here are the numbers of toothbrushes on the top and in the second row, the cost in dollars of the toothbrushes. A linear function models the cost based on the number of toothbrushes made. Which statement about the rate of change of this function is true? So here we have a function. So a linear function at that, so there's a rate of change going on here. And it's based on the number of toothbrushes made. So here they have three, six, 12, and nine up there. So I notice that there's a difference of three every time you keep going up. And here it's 450 as you keep going up. So uh, I notice my rate of change is the difference between the coordinates. So the difference between the y values and the x values. So I will call the toothbrushes the x value because they're independent because the y value is depending upon uh, how many toothbrushes you have. So the cost is going to be depending upon the number of toothbrushes that you sell or, have, or make there. So if the difference between the toothbrushes cost is $4.50 over three, that difference or that uh, quotient is $1.50 per toothbrush. So once I found the difference, uh, the difference between uh, the cost and the difference between the number of toothbrushes, uh, I this is my uh, rate of change. So it's changing by $1.50 per toothbrush. So my slope or my rate of change, I call it ROC, the rock, is $1.50 per toothbrush. So the cost is increasing, I notice. So it's going up $4.50 per each toothbrush. And the first one says the cost increased by $1.50. And if you look at the other ones, they're saying their cost increased by uh, $4.50 or $9 for each of these. And we figure, based on what we just did, the first one has got to be it. So we figured out our rate of change. So I'm going to go with choice A. So A looks like it's it. And yes, it is. So I hope you figured that out with me with no problem. But there's another way, you know, write your slope, your point intercept formula. I'm sorry, your, your slope, point slope formula, another way of doing it. But um, I thought that was direct. All right, let's keep going. Which equation represents the line shown in the graph uh, coordinate plane below? So we got a multiple choice here. So the first thing I noticed in reading from left to right, the line is facing down, pointing downwards. So that means your slope is negative because the line is going down. So you have a negative slope. 
So I'm going to get rid of choice A and choice C. Why? Because those are positive slopes. And we know positive slopes point upwards. So it would be pointing that way. So it's got to be either B or D. Now, how do you determine uh, which one it is now, Dr. Rob? Because it's negative slope. Well, I'm going to pick two points on this line. One, I'll pick the origin. And here's a good point right here. And I'm going to follow and count my slope. And my rate of change or slope is the difference in the y values. And the y, remember, goes up and down. And uh, over the difference in the x coordinate. And remember, the x goes left and right. OK, so I'm just going to count. So I'll start here, count down one. Now I'm going to go to the right, one, two, three, four. So I went down one and over to the right, four. And when I go down, that's negative. So that gives me a negative one fourth. Let me make sure that's correct. I'll try it again. I'll pick another two points. So let's see, here's one over here and here's one over here. So let's see if that holds true right there. So I'll go down one. Now let me count over. One, two, three, four. Yep, that seems to work. So I'm gonna go with choice letter D because that's the one that goes down one and I don't like how I can circle that Dr. Rob. That seems to go down uh, one and four across. Whereas negative four X, that means go four boxes down and one to the right. And if I did that from the origin, I'd be down here and one to the right. So I'd be down there. So that would be point B. And that's not good. That's why B is no good. So if you said choice D, like me, you are correct. So I hope you're getting what's going on. If you're not sure, rewatch the video and write down your questions. Write me a comment. I'll be glad to answer. All right, number 17. A study was conducted to determine the relationship between the age X in years of a certain brand of motorcycle and its value Y in dollars. The equation Y equals negative 750X plus 8,500. Best models, the data. Based on the equation, what is the best estimated value of the motorcycle of a motorcycle that is five years old? All right, let's underline a few things here. The age is based on the letter X, and it's in years, how it's old. I noticed it said it was five years old, so X will be equal to five so far. And it said the value of dollars was represented by Y. So Y is the money. So Y happens to be equal to all of this stuff here. That's your equation. So your dollars will be equal to negative 750 times the value of X plus 8,500. So we said X was five. So let's put in there the five and get our calculator to help us calculate the value. And I got negative 750 parenthesis five parenthesis plus 8,500. All right, press enter. And I get $4,750, which is the value of the motorcycle after five years. So I'm going to pick choice B. All right. That was pretty good and straightforward. And choice B, $4,750. All right. So let's keep going. We've got one more question we want to do. A flower vase is in the shape of a cylinder and has a diameter of five inches and a height of seven inches. Which equation could be used to determine the volume in cubic inches of the vase? So we want the uh, volume. So we're dealing with the problem 
a volume and the shape is a cylinder. What's good about this state test, they give you a formula sheet and I'm gonna pull it out and I just gotta look up cylinder, there's cylinder, there's the volume formula. Let me just cut that out. And put this back and paste, paste my little volume formula. So there's my little volume formula. Volume equals pi r squared times the height. So let's pull out a, a cylinder in a second so we really can see what it looks like. But it has a diameter. Diameter is not what we need here. We need the r, which is the radius. So I have to deal with the radius, not the diameter. But did you know that the radius is half of the diameter? So I would take half of five. So let's pull this out. And here's my cylinder. The height of it is seven inches. My diameter is this long line that cuts, that goes from the one side of the circle to the other side of the circle, the base is in this, in this uh, uh, cylinder. And I need half of five. So half of five is 2.5. So they asked us to pick the equation to find the volume, the volume of this. So I need the volume equals, I need pi, I need r, r we said was 2.5, and don't forget to square it, and the height is 7. So my volume is equal to pi r squared, I'm sorry, pi uh, 2.5 squared times 7, and that looks like choice letter D. So I'm going to go with D. And hopefully you did too. So that's pretty much it for me today, ladies and gentlemen. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Write down your questions if you're unsure. Bring them in uh, uh, in class. I'll be glad to answer them or write me a, a comment. I'll write you back. I hope you understood what's going on. If you're not sure, dial the teacher homework helpline. I great people to talk to at 212-777-3380, Monday to Thursday, 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. Give them a call. They're nice people, and they'll help you out. Don't forget to watch our show, Math Time, on Tuesdays, 4.30 p.m. to 5 p.m. on Optimum Cable Vision on Channel 15, but it's only in peak skill. Don't forget to watch my YouTube study videos. My channel name is Dan Robinson, PKMS, Peak Skill Middle School. Subscribe to our channel. Give us a thumbs up if you like what we're doing. Help us to get to our next uh, 1,000 subscribers. Tell your friends, tell your neighbors, Dr. Rob has a YouTube channel, and he'd like your help and support. Write me a comment, because I do write you back. Check out our latest release, PKMS Math Prep 22. See what we did this year to prepare for the state test. You can tweet me at DRobMath1. If you would like a copy of a worksheet on some of the topics that we've done, write me at DRobinson at PeakSkillSchools.org. Good luck on your exam. Buenas suerte and a las emanes. I know you're going to do well because you've been watching my tutorial videos, so check them out, and I know you're going to be prepared for the test. So this is Dr. Robinson signing off of the Grade Aid Review for the New York State 2022. Good luck on your exam. I hope you do very, very well. Bye-bye.